So this video is about how you can, uh, whether you've got an old car that doesn't have a garage door opener in it and you don't want to carry around one of those uh, little visor clip-on ones, or if you bought a new vehicle and it didn't come with one. Um, just so happens I bought a new truck, Ford F-150, and um, does have a powered mirror here, which means it's the electrochromatic. If somebody comes up behind me with their brights on, this will auto dim. So it does have power, which is nice. In addition to all the other power lights and stuff up here. So, um, but it didn't have the home link. So go on eBay uh, or Craigslist or something and uh, search for home link or car to you um, parts. And this is a used part. You can get this for like 20 bucks. Um, and it'll usually have a little lead. Make sure you get the, a little bit of a wire harness with it so you can, and know which one's positive and which one's negative. Outside of that, you just need the instructions for programming this thing. So quickly, I'm going to show you how I did this in my uh, Ford F-150. Um, I just uh, pulled out this uh, multi-pin connector that's on the back of the mirror there. So you just push the um, prong here, and then you can pull that out. And the reason I did that is because I only want power to my home link buttons when the key is in the car. So if somebody doesn't break my uh, window um, when my car is in my driveway and immediately be able to have access to my garage. So I'm looking for power that's only on uh, when the key is in and the ignition's on. So you can see I've got the key in now because radio is basically on and I got the screen on. So I've got the key in the on position. And so I'm just looking to find which of these pins and if you look at this uh, closely you'll see that uh, even though it's a multi like uh, about 10 pin uh, connector here there's only five silver prongs inside there so it's only five wires and you can verify that up here that there's only five wires so um, two of those will have power one's a positive and one's a negative and I've already probed them out with my multimeter here and found out that this bottom left here and the top left position here do give me 12 volts. And I checked that, I won't show you now, but I, because it's just hard to hold this with one hand, but holding those in there with the key on, you'll see the 12 volts on the multimeter. This would just display positive 12. That indicates that I've got the black wire on the ground and the red wire on the positive. If it shows up negative 12 on here, then swap your leads around. And then while you're holding those in there, or if you've got some uh, uh, nifty gator clips and you can get a piece of the wire and maybe clip it on there if you need more hands or get somebody to help you. But uh, then shut the car, keep to an off position and take the key out those should go to zero. Your multimeter should say zero, which these do. So that's a, a perfect scenario for me to tap onto that. So how did I do that? I just pulled this connector, pulled a little bit of the extra wire down, uh, trimmed off a little bit of the protective sheathing, and bought some of these little clips. You can get them at an AutoZone store, little splice clips. Put my new wire in there and spliced in the through old wire and um, did that on both the positive and the negative for that. So now I've got power. If I put the key in the ignition, power up the car, you can see the radio's coming on. Get the volume still turned down. But now you can see that, sure enough, the light's on. And if you look close, my garage door's moving. Because I've already programmed this one, but um, so that's how that works. Go on uh, Google and for the different vo uh, kinds that you can buy, Home Link or a car to you, and you can get the programming instructions because they are different between the two to program it to your garage door. Um, and then you just need to tuck things back up in there, nice and neat, to um, get this out of your way. And now, when you want to put this Home Link part in, you can slide it in, and you can see it can fit underneath the headliner. You can just stick it in and the headliner back in there and just cut out a small opening in your headliner just so that the buttons and the LEDs will shine through and then you can take this little cap off here and that'll squeeze between your headliner 
uh, in between there and the module and you'll have that uh, all set up and look just like a factory installation but uh, I did this for uh, $20 on eBay for the unit uh, $1.99 for these connectors at uh, the uh, local auto parts store and instead of paying $300 from the dealer I got this done for about 21 bucks and I did the same thing in this car as well as uh, my daughter's car while I was doing this um, it's just a very easy solution you should be able to do this yourself no problems hope you enjoyed the video if you like it uh, subscribe see this or many of my other videos from the relocation engineer in Franklin Tennessee